Saints, we saw in these previous messages, the Lord is just impressing on me. There's one more message I didn't expect it concerning, as Paul said in Ephesians, that the Father has chosen us. We've been chosen by the Father. We didn't just choose Him. We couldn't find an unsearchable, unknowable God. He revealed Himself to us. He chose us. He predestined us. He chose us before the foundation of the earth. And going on with this, we saw, I was trying to give you that example. If it was a company, the owner of the company is like the father, is the father. And he has openings in that company. And he's going to pick who he wants to work for his company, according to their abilities. And like I said, if someone comes to that company and they can't read or write, but the father chose them, they're not going to be over doing over legal documents. They might be artistic in some way, and he would use them there. But he chooses the people. And he also, as we saw, go see those previous messages. I'm going to make a playlist. I am making a playlist that's already started on these things because it's turned into so many messages. Those chosen by the Father. So the Father chooses those to work at His company. And not only that, He has a position for them. And the Lord, as I was saying, says He will go and prepare a place for us. And then the Lord opened up a whole new thing for me. Where I saw it, we were talking about the Lord, God said He would go and prepare a place for us. So the Father has chosen us. He has chosen a position for us. And the Lord said He would go and prepare a place. It's like we in this image of this office. The Father has given us this office and a position to be filled. And the Lord goes to prepare the office. He prepares it for us. Why? So we have everything we need. Everything we need in that office at our desk our furniture, our computer, our writing paper, everything we need, books, communication, everything is right there that we need to fulfill the purpose of the Father. And I said, then what's our choice? The Father chose us. He picked our position. The Lord went and made a place ready for us. He prepared that office. What's our choice? We go into that office and to that place for what we were hired for. And we go there and what we do with that. Salvation is a free gift, but what you do in that place that God has put you, that responsibility, how well you excel in that is how much you have in heaven, your rewards in heaven, your position in heaven, depends on what you do. The Father having chose you, put you in that position, the Lord preparing it and giving you everything you need to succeed and excel. What do you do with it? And then the Lord showed me again because we had just ended the last message in Matthew 25 with the ten virgins. And I thought I was done with this again. But no, again today He just pours His Spirit out upon me and brings me to the talents. Matthew 25. Verse 14, with this image, this way to explain it, that it's like a company that the Father has chosen who will work there and made a, has a position, made a position for them. The Lord set up their office, their place, for everything they need to excel and to achieve greatness. Then what do you do with it? And he brought me to the parable of the talents. Matthew 25, 14. After talking about the virgins, and you got to see my message on those things, I'm making a playlist. Go to the playlist and go through it because these things are just being laid out by God by a, like a book. And in verse 14, For it is just like a man, after talking about the parable of the ten virgins and how I explained that to you, For it is just like a man about to go on a journey who calls his own slaves... Once again, just like half of the ten virgins, all these religious leaders say half of them are going to hell and I showed you and don't believe that. They're not. They're God's people. They're just not ready. And here again, 
who called his own slaves. Half of these people ain't going to hell either. None of them are. Listen, for just like a man about to go on a journey, and he called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one each. Listen, saints, what I just told you. Each according to his own ability. When God brings you to this place, when God's preparing you, when brought, God's brought you to his kingdom, the kingdom of God, once you're of the brethren, God has a place and a purpose for you according to your ability. You don't got to worry about God giving you something to do that you, you just can't do. It would just be so odd for you and you are unable to do it. He does it according to your ability. And he went on a journey. Verse 16, immediately the one who had received five talents went and traded with them and gained five more talents. In the same manner, the one who had received the two talents gained two more. It's what I said. He gave you that place. The, he chose you. He gave you that position. The Lord prepared your office, prepared for, for you everything you need. These first ones are immediately creating a gain, getting a person, a per, uh, an increase. They're having purpose and they're excelling at their jobs. Verse 18, but the one who received the one talent, listen saints, went away and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. So the first two are excelling at their job. The next one went away. Right away the first day of work. Uh, yeah, I'm busy. Uh, I don't feel good today. I'm not going in. Or he goes in and uh, every time you see him, he's out talking somewhere. He's wandering around the parking lot. Never, You see those people all the time at work. They're never getting anything done. And he hid his master's money. Everything that God gave him, nothing's being done with it. It's being hid. In verse 19, now after a long time, listen here because it's going to come up later, saints, the master of those slaves, not two of them, and the other one was the fake slave, the master, those chosen by the father, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. And the one who had received five talents came up and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted me five talents to me. See, I have gained five more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. It's just like you got somebody working at work, and they say, I gave you those charts. I gave you that money to invest. I gave you that position to hold. What'd you do? Hey, you gave me uh, $100,000. I got $200,000. Wow, good job. You're doing a good job. I'm going to give you even more. I can trust you with what you have. Verse 22. The one also who had received two talents came up and said, Master, you have entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. Here's somebody according to their ability they can't do quite what the other one do, but they got a gain. They gained. There's always something you can do. All these people that are waiting, watching, they're to be working. They're to be serving God. And this one gained two more. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. You're a good worker. You're doing a good job. I'm going to get a profit out of you. I'm gaining something with you. And the one who had received the one talent, God made it simple on this one. I know you don't have a lot of ability and I just gave you one thing to do. Came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man. He's coming up to this owner who hired him, gave him a position, had his son set the office up with everything he would need. And what's the first thing he says? This one that went away and hid everything? The one that wasn't at work when he should be? Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you do not sow and gathering where you scatter no seed. And he said, and I was afraid and went away. He just basically wasn't doing anything. What's you to be afraid of? 
The guy chose you. He brought you into the company. He gave you an office. His son set everything up that you would need. And he said, and I went away. That was the problem. You went away. You were in Egypt. You were in Babylon. You were in the flesh. You were in the world. You weren't here working. We were all working. Oh yeah, well, I was down there on Tuesday. That's because we had a free buffet. You were down here eating. Oh, I went down this day. That's because we were taking a trip that day. You gained me nothing. And I was afraid and went away and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. You still got what's yours. The office is there. The computer's brand new. The No, I haven't even sat in that chair. Uh, everything, the pencils are there and everything's perfect. It's just like you left it. But the master answered and said to him, this is one of his slaves, the master of those slaves. Look what he says, saints. But his master answered and said to him, you wicked, lazy slave, you knew that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I scatter no seed. He says, you wicked. You go to an office and somebody's supposed to be working and you come back and you left them in a place of responsibility and you're responsible over for them. And you come back and they went away. You, they come and they say, oh, here I am. And they go, w where'd you get your work done? No, I went away. I was busy. It wasn't a good day for me. You can say, you are lazy. You just, you, that's wicked. How could you do that? And you're lazy. In verse 27, then you ought to have put my money in the bank. All this stuff I gave you, I gave you money to work with and invest in. What'd you do with that? Then you ought to have put the money in the bank. And on my arrival, I have, would have received money back with interest. At least even if you weren't here, you could have dropped it off at the bank, the money I gave you to invest. Drop it off at the bank and you could have said, yeah, you gave me $100,000 and the time you were gone, I gained a couple thousand. At least there's something to show. This one has nothing to show for what he's done. That's the ones, that's Laodicea. They have nothing to show. Verse 28, therefore take away the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For to everyone who has shall more to be given. As you're walking with God, as you're moving on with God, as you're working in this kingdom of heaven, as you're building treasures in heaven, you're building upon that living temple of God, you that are building are going to receive more. It's going to become more and more and more. It's going to be like eventually a river that no one can cross. For to everyone who has, more shall be given, and he shall have abundance. As you, The Holy Spirit's just been pouring himself out upon us. That's why I say about these messages. I never go and say, never, all these um, almost 150 messages I've done now this year. I never go and say, let me get together a study. I'll look up some stuff on the internet. I'll see what this group believes. I'll put it all together. I ain't doing any of that. I'm just sitting there waiting upon the Lord and every day his spirit comes and gets poured upon me and he shows me these things. And then I just come out here and share them. I got no plan. I'm just sharing what he showed me the best I can. For to everyone who has more shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from the one who does not have, the one who didn't do anything, the one that's hiding everything, the one that's never at work, the one that has no value to having come there, even what he does have, shall be taken away. Even what he had, they're going to go clean out his office. You're not doing anything with this. we got to give this to somebody who can use it. We gave you that $100,000 to invest, and you went and hid it. i got to get that back from you, and i got to give it to the guy with the 10 talents, because he's going to make 10 times more with it. And look what it says, saints. Here, here's another thing, another revelation I want you to see. That's why when this all came together, I wanted to have this message before, but God brought it all together here. Verse 30, this is where there's so much false teaching and where they're sending half of everybody to hell. Listen what it says about those, this one who did nothing. And cast out the worthless slave. This person's worthless. You're not making a dime. You're just taking up space. You're wasting the, everything we gave you. And listen, and cast out the worthless slave. Remember, he said the master of those slaves. This isn't some unsaved person going to go to hell. I want to show you a revelation here. This 
like it said in verse 19, the master of those slaves, all those slaves, and cast the worthless slave. It is the master's slave, but he's worthless. So what's he going to do? Cast him into the outer darkness. In that place, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then they're all trying to tell you, this is hell. He's getting cast into hell because there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's wrong again, saints. It goes right back to the pre-tribulation rapture and the wedding feast. And those, Laodicea, that go into the tribulation, that's where they're cast into the outer darkness. That's where they're cast, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's going to be a lot of weeping of the saints. And there's going to be a lot of gnashing te of teeth of the unsaved. It's not that the mass, the slaves has the master has those slaves, and now he's going to send the one to hell that never got anything accomplished. If every Christian that never got anything accomplished went to hell, 99% of the Christians are going to hell. It's not it. He's cast into the tribulation. He's cast into that outer darkness. Now there are one, two, three, four, five, six, I believe, places that the New Testament, the Lord talks about being cast into the outer darkness. Two of them in Matthew 13, 42 and Matthew 13, 50, it clearly describes somebody being eternally cast to where there's the weeping and gnashing of teeth. They'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth in the tribulation and there will be a lot of weeping and gnashing of teeth of those going into eternal darkness. Those two verses describe that and say that. Let me read that real quick for you. Matthew 13. Thirteen, forty-two, and 50. And I will cast them into the furnace of fire. In that place there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. They're cast, it's talking about these at the end. Both of these verses are talking about those in the end, the eternal. And in verse 50, and I will cast them into the furnace of fire, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's what he's talking about separating the saints from the ungodly. Those he's chosen that he hasn't. They're cast in that outer darkness, that furnace of fire. It mentions that twice. Every other time it's mentioned here, it just says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's the ones that weren't ready. He isn't going to send the one that didn't accomplish anything. He isn't going to send some Christian that just didn't get anything accomplished because that would be most of Christians. They don't know that they're the body of Christ. They're the church. They're the ministers. They're the priests. They don't even know that. They wait some, for some pastor or evangelist to have a meeting and they give some money and they think that's church. They in themselves and through their life accomplish nothing. They're not going to hell. Everybody wants to send everybody to hell but themselves. This again, just like the ten virgins. It wasn't five went to heaven in the end. Five virgins that had lamps and had oil and knew the Lord. Oh, you're going to hell. They're not going to hell. And these people here, it's talents. It's like that company. Father chose you. He picked you out to come into that company, to come into his kingdom. He has a position in that kingdom for you. He chose for you. The son prepares that, prepares that place for you to have the biggest and best and greatest chance to achieve and excel the most that's possible. He puts you in that place. What do you do with it? If you don't do anything with it, and you just go your own way and hide it in yourself, and you go loving the world and the things of the world, all it's saying is you're going to be cast into the outer darkness. You're going to be cast into the tribulation. There's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But that don't mean it's punishment. The latter day rain's going to get poured out upon those who go into the tribulation. It, God's not going to punish them. He's going to clean them and prepare them for the wedding, the marriage supper, 
They're going to be ready. They're going to be prepared, like it said in Revelations. For the bride has made herself ready. And here too, God has chosen you, brought you to that place. The Lord gives you everything through the Holy Spirit you will ever need. If you don't do anything with that, you're a worthless slave. But He's going to give you a chance to excel. And you will. And preach the gospel in greatness, power, and glory during the tribulation. So let's repent and prepare the way of the Lord. For He's coming.